day, let's invite our man them. Let's do a watch party online. Let's let's hear what it is that God is saying. It's going to be a beautiful time of worship, teaching, and conversation. But without further ado, I want to give us much time for us to gist, to talk, to dissect, to 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 be transparent, to be open, to share, to counsel, um, and with you all. So I'm going to invite. The men of God that I have tonight, we have some special guests. I'm going to invite, first of all, Corriday. My bro, how you doing, sir? I'm blessed, my bro. How you doing? I'm very well, man. It's a pleasure to have you once again. Thank you Hello, for your man. contributions over the years. Over those two weeks ago, over the years, you've been <laughs> a blessing to the Men's Monday community. I'm oh, ready to man. hang it tonight with your wisdom, man of God. <laughs> oh, by the grace of God, man, it's been an honor. Thank you so much, bro. It's a my pleasure, brother. honestly. My pleasure, man. We have none other than Tosan. Yo, what's good, man? Good to see you guys again. Good to see you again, man. Good to cool. hear your voice. Looking forward to <laughs> tonight. Yes, and sir. none other, we have my dear brother, Emmanuel Adeseko. Sir. Hello. Good Hello. evening. Good evening. Good evening, man. Guys, this this is this our first... Our first keynote speaker at our conference two years ago this week. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> And if you remember that, 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 that was a powerful session where the man of God got real with, with the life of ministry and what God delivered him from. I, I, I will always remember that that sermon, sir, man. You've been a blessing to us, sir. We want to thank you for being here tonight with us as well. Thank you. Literally, man. Literally, guys, if you're in the building, show us some love in the comments. You lot are awfully quiet today. I'm used to seeing TK and, and Corey yeah, yeah. and <laughs> other brothers in the comments, literally, fam. But guys, I want to first start with all this, just, just to like, you know, introduce yourselves, who you are, what you do, what you're about, and then we'll get into tonight's discussion. So we can start from my right and then we'll go clockwise as well. Sweet. Um, so my name is Corriday. I'm 24 years old. I just finished my master's in neuroscience by God's grace, got a distinction. Um, and yeah, at my church, I appreciate it. Bless, we bless God, man. At my church, Kingdom Wisdom and Power Ministries, um, I'm essentially the um, youth teacher there um, for the youth church to do the majority of the preaching and teaching there by God's grace. Um, so yeah, in summary, I'm a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save okay. anybody. So, <laughs> I'm going to rinse it till I die, man, honestly. But yeah, man, ask me, guys. Awesome. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Us. Yeah, yeah. So you know when you said clockwise, I was thinking, you know, I can't even see in terms of the angles that we got. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, how you doing? It's Tosan here. Um, yeah, a passionate, passionate fella. Um, in love with Jesus. You see me on podcasts, and yes, I run a business as well with my friend. Um, but yeah, so passionate about manhood and masculinity, as you lot know. And so, yeah, I'm just here for the real, always, that transparency. That's what this is all about. So, yeah, looking forward to the conversation today. Awesome, mm -hmm. awesome. Guys, good evening, good evening. I'm Emmanuel. Um, I, I pastor a church in Birmingham called New Covenant Ministries, and I, I also run a business as well, um, Excel Midlands. That's just about <clears throat> providing housing and support for vulnerable people, getting them back on their feet in the community. And just like you guys, I'm passionate about, about manhood and people, just seeing people restored. You know, I would love to share the things that I would have loved to have been told when I was <laughs> in early years. So I'm hoping today can bless somebody as well. Wow. Okay. You started. Okay, man. I've got <laughs> <laughs> So, guys, 2020 has been a year and a half. You know, it's, it's not even finished yet. We've got three weeks left, I believe, or two weeks left. Mm. So, um, it's been an interesting year. And obviously this year we decided to continue our theme of Say Yes, which yeah. deals with um, about men of God surrendering their lives to the call of God and about us being men who, who, who are dying to ourselves and living for a cause that's greater than us, essentially being disciples, <laughs> being yeah, yeah. disciplined followers of Christ in every area of our lives, not just, you know, on a Sunday, but our career and, you know, our finances, every area. So, um, this year, obviously, you know, I was thinking, if I'm going to be honest now, I was like, oh, maybe we should have a bit more of a softer title. Maybe we should just, you know, do something a bit more, a bit more light. It's been a hard year, you know, God, just, you know, just come and hug us and give us a little pat on the back. Mm. You know what I mean? <laughs> Throughout this whole year, it was as if, well, my mantra that I was getting from the Holy Spirit was that you was born for now 
And with all this chaos that's happening, all this darkness, all this madness, there was there was there was there was an answer that was to be found in the children of God. This was this was an hour for us to arise and shine. This was an hour for us to have a greater level of us saying yes to Christ, for us to now be, you know, a, a solution or us to be an answer, us to be somebody who could, you know, give direction to all of what's happening right now. So I still felt the Holy Spirit say, I'm still calling the men to say yes. And mm. and it's, 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 you know, it's a very um, a, a straight directive. And I thought, in spite of what's going on, God is still calling us to say, yeah, to still more surrender, there's still more to see things from his perspective and stuff. So I thought, you know what, in the midst of us even saying yes, saying yes is a process of us even, you know, um, diceping everything we've gone through, us yeah. trying to like, you know, find God in the midst of it and still have the 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 the, the, the logical the reason to say that you know what God is still God. If he says this, I'm gonna follow it this way. So, so tonight I want us to like talk about our experiences this year to see you know how we heard God in the midst of what's happening. How has that affected us? Have we always listened? What did we learn? You know, our L's and our W's <laughs> and um also you know any any <clears throat> advice or any any testimony of what you, what has happened in your life when you have said yes and what you feel maybe god is calling you to say yes to in spite of what's happened in 2020 so um i don't know who wants to go first <laughs> you can start anywhere with any start and it will, will flow from there yeah everyone's looking at me yeah no i, d I don't mind going first. um <laughs> Yeah, it's been, it's been uh, it's definitely been an interesting year. Very interesting for me personally as well. Um, and I say, my friend always says, my good friend always says, wins and losses. And I feel like that's what this year has really um, symbolised for me. And I think when I well, so I lost my um, my granddad. Essentially, you know, my my fiance's uh, grandfather, who's very close to the family um we yeah we lost him and um it was obviously he was fit he was healthy and strong and i'll be honest with you i think in a time where i've been preparing for marriage and the scenes to come and you know there had been some good news that had happened prior to that that kind of rocked me it mm -hmm. rocked me a lot and um it rocked my yes and i say that because i kind of found myself not wanting to um not wanting to pray um, understanding the call of my life, understanding who I am in him, understanding that he's with me, but then not wanting anything to do with him at the same time. So not being able to deny him, because obviously this is, you know, as you lot know, you lot know my testimony, you know, I, I, I'm not in it for the fake stuff. You know, I'm only here because I know that this is the truth and this is everything. Um, and um, I was in a place where I was, I was, I was offended by God, and that affected my yes because, and and it's almost like as you know, Big Bro I will tell you, you know, like in that time, you know, I'm leading prayer and I'm doing these things, and yeah, that's gift. The gift is not an issue. <laughs> I found myself performing, you know, and um, I I wasn't spending intimate time with him, mm. but my usual yes would have me spending time with him, have me fellowshipping and worshiping. But I was angry thinking, God, how can this happen at such a time like this? So there's some good <laughs> things that's happened. I've moved out, you know, we're preparing, things are shaping up nicely. And then this just happens and it just affects the whole mood. And I'm thinking, I don't even know how to support my fiance through this. I'm hurting too, but I need to be strong for her. Then it's like, there's all of this stuff that's going on. I'm like, God, what's happening here? You know, and I understand and I understand, you know, life happens and all that stuff. But those answers weren't good enough for me. And everyone's just telling me about how good God is. And I'm just thinking, I don't want to hear any of that right now. <laughs> I'm tired of hearing that. I know God is good. I know. I know. You're telling me scriptures. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> you know I mean, I know. Rest but I didn't feel like doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so that that really challenged my yes. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, and, and, and even in that, it had me moving out of character to, towards my leaders. Mm -hmm. I'm moving out of character towards my leaders. Um, uh, uh, many things, but but again, you know, I I, I found myself forcing myself um, to spend time with him because I was forced to look in the mirror, thinking like I don't like the person that I'm looking at right now. Mm. And I realized that 
again, I've been hearing this word of sonship and etc. But I realized that you know I, I I need to be fathered, and there's an issue here, and um, you know I, I need to get more vulnerable with him. Mm -hmm. uh, and and after that, through you know healthy discussions with with leaders and accountability, I reached out to the guys. I said, look. You know, and this 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 was like a dig at pride as well for me, to be honest with you. I I said, look, I'm struggling. I think I'm struggling mentally. I think I'm, you know, I, I I'm feeling weird. I'm getting angry. I'm, you know, all these things. I'm acting out of character. I need the support, and and the leaders were there, and and you know, accountability. Um, a few brothers as well. I see one of them in the chat here, Alex and Raf and 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 Josh Babatunde. I was able to have some real conversations with them, and and Aaron Hill as well. A few people to really just pray for me. Mm. Because um, it, it's a re it was a really tough time, but I saw that that's that thing that usually you, uh, when things would happen, I'd find myself I'm working, I'm working, I'm working. You know, I just I just always put myself in work, mm. but I'm not dealing with things emotionally. And now it's not working anymore, so I'm focusing at work, but I'm, my mind's still messed up. Mm. Um, but yeah, that I, I I didn't like how that shook up my yes, but it did. <laughs> It did, and it was almost like knowing Jesus is real and stuff, and knowing that He's with me wasn't enough. Wow, it wasn't enough. Wow, yeah. you and, know, and and, and obviously, guys, I, I'm I'm privy to it because I'm uh, I'm Tossie's pastor. But it, <laughs> what was interesting was that mm. God was still speaking to God was speaking to Tossie way before about certain things that 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 moment exposed. So, yeah. i.e., I, I, the, the the emotional state, the emotional maturity, and whatnot, and how even maybe there's there's been stuff buried from the past that that experience now exposed, and therefore he wasn't just dealing with death; he was dealing with death and and this and that and that, and therefore the questions and answers were not were not matching. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? So it's very powerful to see that how God still is faithful to speak to our seasons ahead of time, and sometimes our responses when He's speaking, then we think, "Oh, why are you talking about this now? I'm good," but then. Something is coming ahead <laughs> that, mm. he, that we that he sees in hindsight that he you need to that you need to prepare for, and God is still faithful in the midst of it to restore yes, and 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 to and to heal. So that's where that's real, bro. That's real. I, I'm sure a lot of man them in this group can relate to their yes being shocked up by one incident that they thought would never happen. Uh, I, yeah, that's real. Anybody else can go or add to that. Actually, so yeah. Wow, literally, as you're as you're speaking about it, it it's like a, a kind of a mirror on on my side because for for myself, this year has been you know it's been a lot of a lot of great things have happened, but one of the most significant things that could ever happen, you know, was was in April. You know, I got a call um, from my my cousin. You know, my dad had had passed away. You know, from um, coronavirus and, and all this kind of stuff. And what is what's crazy about it is is that. Several months before, God was speaking to me about, you know, our relationship and how um, there's some things that God wants to, in, in, in essence, um, he was highlighting to me that time is short, you know, so I was mm -hmm. prompting my dad and prompting and prompting that it was, you know, to, to, to be open, there were certain things within the family that we needed to, to address and things like that. So his, his passing felt like a blow, but also felt like a robbery because there were certain things and certain questions that I didn't have answers to right and the thing is, is that one of the things i've had to learn this year in terms of saying yes to god is forgiveness wow yeah. wow forgiveness yes me apostle pastor <laughs> forgiveness again because one of the things i realize is that there's a point whereby you get to a place of responsibility a place of leadership where sometimes people don't think that you have any emotions anymore <laughs> you know and so being in that place where that was the most devastating news Yes, I, you know, I know he believed in Christ. I know he he pastored people and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't per se just the 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 passing that was difficult to handle. It was the fact that it brought so many things up, you know, family things up that I wasn't even aware of. Wow. And then there's that how that's handled. And then if I'm, if I'm honest with you, it also helped me understand mm -hmm. the level of emotional intelligence or the lack of emotional intelligence that some Christians have. Wow. You know, going back yeah. to what you said, Tosan, about people coming and bringing... I believe, you know, the joy of the Lord is my strength. <laughs> but while going through a process, I needed support. Needed wow. support. And I'm, you know, I'm grateful for the people that did support. But I found that in that period, 
Um, I mean, it's, it's still quite raw now, but in that period, especially at the beginning, um, when people are used to seeing you strong, used to seeing you in a position of, of responsibility, sometimes it's as if you don't feel like you've got permission yeah. to express your humanity. Wow. You know? And um, oh, and I feel that's a big issue because it's not just with a pastor, with how many men do we know as fathers, as, as, as uncles. It's like they get into a place where they've got such a level of responsibility now that you don't have the permission. And you know, I'm grateful because there was some safe people that I could actually be totally honest with. That's good. You know? um, but it was not just the actual event that I had to deal with, it was the insensitivity, you know, that I, I found that certain Christians, um, I, I say Christians, I'm not trying to bash the church, but I'm just trying to be honest because uh, it, it's as if, if you feel anything, then you have no faith. My you know? God. Mm. Like, can I, can I have a, a bit of permission just to, to bleed for a bit, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. and express it, because I found that that was actually, you know, I don't know if you guys hear these kind of statements where, you know, don't worry, just be strong. Yeah. Be strong. Wait, I'm bleeding. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but I found, this is one of the things I found. It was true that certain people may not have seen me strong, but also I realized that there may have been some areas in my life where I had not, sh I had not been open to show a level of weakness. So wow. people weren't necessarily able to know how to handle Wow. She has me. That's so good. even though there was a point whereby during the process, I was quite, I'll be honest, I was quite bitter. Praying in tongues, seeking God, but a bit bitter, you know? A bit a bit like, well, this person didn't call me. <laughs> <laughs> That's real. That's real. That's Listen, real. Yeah. you know, this person didn't call me. You know, Because when you're in a place of vulnerability, you're easily susceptible to, sometimes your wounds can tell you lies. You know, and, and some of my wounds are telling me, you know, this person wasn't there. And this, mm -hmm. as, you know, you learn forgiveness, forgiveness, you know, as, as a position of responsibility, you, you're forgiving people. But when it's easy to forgive when you're strong, it's hard to forgive when the people that you you expecting things from, you know, are not meeting up. So I had to relearn mercy, relearn. I don't think I've ever been as angry <laughs> before in my life. But my ultimately, one of the things that I, I learned is is the power of brokenness, man. The power of actually saying, wow. you know, help, mm. help. The, the most powerful prayer I've been praying this year is, is help. Wow. And some people have asked me, both within my church and brothers and different, asked me, how, you know, how, how come you don't look like you've gone for anything? And honestly, it's, it's not that I, I'm not still feeling it. But one thing I've learned is, is that if you really want to gain strength, you have to actually acknowledge weakness. Come on. I'm going to talk about yes. We, we, we still quite saying yes to God. Can you even say yes to God? Can you even in your ability, can as a, as a human being, what part of us as human beings actually desires God? None. So I had to, yeah. my prayers had to shift from this kind of, you know, sometimes we can pray this kind of kumbaya prayers of, you know, it's, it's Christian. It sounds great. Sounds good. But yeah. My prayers, well, one thing I, I learned is that God, God, I don't describe, God, God really is relational, really is relational. Yeah. And the kind of prayers that I was praying was not just the Greek and the Hebrews. God, I'm, I don't feel like reading my Bible right now. Come on. Yeah, I'm come tired. On. In fact, some of the prayers that helped me from some madness, because it's at the point whereby you have to say yes to God, that everything around you is trying to get your attention. Yeah, It was a madness. During that time, it was like the devil was planning, because during that time when dad had passed, that's when I was the most vulnerable. Yeah. Every Sousa Bell come out of, just come from, come from... You know, I've got I've got a new I've I've got a number a new number that I've had for years, but they don't have the contacts. I'm thinking, how come this person is adding me from Facebook and this and that? Hi, Emmanuel, I miss you. I've not seen you in years. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> am I being too honest, or is this too honest? No, no, no come on, hey, just have to pay oh. for it. Right, so I found that it there were so many things that I needed to help me say yes. One is, I to God, I don't feel like saying yes right now. So I needed to help me desire. Mm -hmm. Two, I had to have some safe people say, listen, bro, I'm actually annoyed. I'm angry. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm offended with the situations. I wasn't offended with God. I, I wasn't offended with God, but I was offended with some of the situations that had taken place. And I found that sometimes when you say these things, people can question your spirituality. They can question, because without transparency there is no real faith david explained mm. it david was able to show god i'm upset god i'm frustrated god i'm annoyed he was able to express his humanity and i found this year that acknowledging my humanity was a key step in stepping into divinity again 
Hey, you know? yeah, Jesus yeah. was both a man and he was also God. And one thing I love is in John 11, when he had the power, he had the faith to see Lazarus healed. He, John 11, he had the faith to see him healed, bring, brought out the grave. But what I found so powerful about Jesus is, is that even before he brought out Lazarus and called him forth, Jesus cried. Yes. He was yeah. present in the moment. He was present. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't get beyond the moment. He was present. And for me, the the I'm kind of the person who, right, let's get on, let's go, you know, go for it, let's move forward. You know, I was gonna preach the Sunday after hearing the news. It was even some of my members like Emmanuel, just chill out, relax, my family. <laughs> chill out, relax, you know. But you know what's powerful? This is what's powerful about it. I didn't realize that even ministry was a bit of an idol until I took some time to kind of just say, because yes is not of yes just to ministry. Yes was a yes to God. Why, why am I feeling so sensitive? And I mm -hmm. found that even though ministry is important and it's mm -hmm. necessary, my mm -hmm. yes was not per se to ministry. My yes was actually to God. Yeah. You know? And so throughout that, about two months, two, two and a half months, I spent you know, listening to, you know, and I thank God for my church because there's some great leaders, people ministering. And I, honestly, part of certain insecurities are rising up. Oh, he's preaching. Oh, he's powerful. I need to go, I need to go minister. What? And God was saying, that's that pride in you there. That's, that's, Come that, on. that's that, that. Even though the enemy meant the situation for bad, this mm. lockdown has been an opportunity to deal with some of the areas of my life that had not, been, been healed or that have been overlooked because of the busyness of life. So although the enemy meant it for bad, you know, God used it as a platform to help me actually know, am I born again for knowing God yeah. or am I just doing the work of the Lord? Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I had to say yes. I had to say yes. Re go through the bait of Satan. I don't know if you guys have the bait of Satan. Oh, you know, forgiveness. Powerful. You know, <laughs> you know and, just, and to rebuild some areas that I didn't even know were broken. Mm. You know, I can say a lot. I'm probably saying I'm talking a lot, guys. But for me, yes, no. it was about forgiveness this year. It was about being open. It was about asking for help and saying, God, I don't know how to, I don't know what prayer to pray. I'm tired. But I found power in it. I found grace in it because truly, when we're honest, it's a next, it's a step to humility, which brings which brings grace. Wow. 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 I just feel like happening right now. <laughs> Church is dismissed, guys. <laughs> uh, honesty leads to humility to more grace. Acknowledging wow. my humanity is into divinity. Guys, there are so many lines in there. Yeah. I'm just, yeah. Wow. Yeah. How, <laughs> A lot, how do man. I even, how do I even follow that? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> how do I follow that? Um, I think, you know, Toss, you said something earlier on, you said something about essentially the truth. Um, and how saying yes was coming to terms with the truth. And what I find interesting is that Jesus says that your yes be yes and your no be no. And that sort of speaks to integrity um, because truth says that the yes is the yes and the no is the no. And we know that it has to do with truth because Jesus then says anything more than this is of the devil who is the father of lies. Um, and so this year has been an interesting thing for me because of integrity, I think I would say. Um, so at the beginning of the year, um, in fact, we've got one of our youth leaders here as well, um, in the chat. Um, but at the beginning of the year, my, my Bishop selects five of us youths and is like, okay, you guys, um, are now going to be in charge of the youth church from now on. Okay. Um, and at the time it's like, oh, you know, praise the Lord. Oh, minister Corriday. Yeah. All that lovely stuff. And all the others. <laughs> Praise the Lord, it's great. And the year is going as it's going, all this turmoil here, turmoil there. We've got lockdown, I'm doing my masters from home. But it's, it's cushy for me because it's working out for my good. Everybody's saying 2020 is a terrible year and I'm like, oh, it's not terrible for me. Until the woman that I was in a relationship with and was looking to propose to broke up with me. Uh, and then, <sighs> Whatever we want to say, the fact of the matter is two months later, she was engaged to another man. Now, I know where many of your minds are jumping. But you talk about saying yes to God. My God. How do you say yes in a time like that? My and God. say, yes, God, let your will be done. My God. Right? And so for me, it was one of those things of in that time, because a lot of these things were sort of, for me, leading up to 
marriage, thinking about, okay, once I finish my master's, I need to get a job as soon as possible so I can save up money. And once I've saved up money, I can then buy this, I can get the house, I can get the car, and we can do this thing together. And then that news rocks me. I'm in the middle of a youth team leaders meeting, and I received a text message to say, hey, just wanted to let you know, this is what's been going on, this is what's happening, just didn't want you to find out from other people. Now, God bless the young lady. She's a lovely, she's a lovely young lady. Don't let's not get <laughs> twisted. Let's not get twisted. You know, I I you know I loved her. So we can't say that she's a this or she's a that. Lovely young lady. Mm -hmm. But in that moment, the question did come like, well, God, what do I do now? Come on, man. That's what real. do I do now? And it's so crazy because it was crazy because I remember when we had when we had broken up at the time. Uh, hopefully, this is not too real for the brothers. Hopefully, no. you can it. <laughs> but when we had broken up initially, because of the lockdown, we hadn't been able to have church. And the youth church has been working very hard by God's grace to essentially try and change the way we do and be church. And so we'd not had a new service in this rebrand. So the lockdown is about to come to an end. The week that we're about to start this rebranded service, doing church, uh, in a new way, hashtag mm. a new thing, right? Doing church in a new way um, <laughs> is the very week that she breaks up with me. My God. And what do I now have to do? Turn my vision from focusing on this and tunnel vision, focus on the work of God. Focus mm. on the purpose that God has called me to. Focus on what the Lord has called me to do. And as we're doing that, in the process of doing that, two months later, I then find out she's engaged. Now, what I, and this is, just for me, I can't say for everyone, but what came to me in that time when I was questioning, God, what do I do now? Is simply keep going. Okay. Keep going. Whoa. Keep going. Uh, yeah. And so I literally just, as Toss said a couple of weeks ago, I just faced my front and kept going. Now we're talking about saying yes. I said before that we had said yes to being made heads of the youth church. The mm. Sunday that I found out the news that she was engaged, God bless her if she's ever watching this. There's no animosity. Um, I love you with the love of Christ, as they say. <laughs> but I remember literally... <laughs> That's <amazing> bro. <laughs> but I remember that the Sunday that I'd received this news, exactly, RNS1, you're absolutely right. You have to remember that if God didn't, or if God didn't decree this, at the very least, he permitted it. And we know that all things work to the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Amen. So we have to trust him. Amen. Um, anywho, the very Sunday that I found out this news, that was in the evening of that Sunday. The mm. early afternoon of that Sunday, I was preaching to you, church, about the church of Smyrna. Mm. And how they were suffering and they had been persecuted. Whoa. And likely they were praying to Jesus to, you know, deliver us from evil. Right? Whoa. And Jesus says to the church of Smyrna, I see your persecution. I see your suffering. Keep going. More persecution is coming. And the oh. devil is going to put some of you in jail. So they're praying that their suffering, perhaps, likely they're praying that their suffering would end. Likely, maybe. And oh. Jesus' response to that is, more suffering is coming. Jesus. And he says, I see the suffering you're going through. More is coming. But then watch this. He says, it's only going to last 10 days, which means that the suffering is not permanent for a believer. So yeah. suffering ends either by God healing you of that disease or by God delivering you from that situation. Or what's this? Suffering for the believer ends in death. And guess what? That's good news. My God. Guess what? That's good news. Why? Because we then get to be with Jesus. So I'm preaching this word to this people about suffering <laughs> and how Jesus, I'll say this other thing as well. When a believer goes through suffering, it's not necessarily because they've been rejected by God. It's not even necessarily because of the sin they've gone through. Sometimes it's an affirmation of who they are in God. Wow. God says to the devil, have you considered Job? My God. And so I'm preaching. Oh, yeah. You know, wow. Powerful sermon. <laughs> <laughs> Lo and behold. And less than 12 hours later, I received this, quite frankly, devastating news. Good news for her. And, you know, God be praised forever. And what do I do? I do what the man of God does. I say, hey, I'm shocked. But I pray that God will bless your home, Amen. that you'll be more than he ever expects you to be as a wife Amen. and that he'll be more than you could ever expect as a husband. 
and so on and so on and so on. Now, I'm not saying any of this. I'm not saying, <laughs> now listen, I'm not saying any of this. Remember what I said at the beginning, I'm a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody. So I'm not saying this to say that, oh, you know, yeah, look how holy I am. No, it's the grace of God that enables us to say yes. Hallelujah. It's the grace of God that enables us to say yes. And so when these testing times come, it's that same grace when you were comfortable that triggered you to be able to say yes. It's that same grace when you're uncomfortable that allows you to keep going. Why? Because Paul says that Jesus told him that in his weakness, yeah. God's strength was made perfect. Not that God was lacking in strength and now his strength had become perfect. Mm. I think, I believe, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, what that means is that when you look weak and yet you're doing all these amazing things, it's not because of you. It's because of God. Hmm. it's because of god and therefore before the eyes of men god's strength is made perfect hmm. because this weakling is able to be strong hmm. this stiff-necked rebellious person is able to be submissive to god and say yes and so now the last thing i'll say is i said integrity in this time i'm going to be real with you please i have felt you know i often used to ask myself a question why is it that guys, when they go through heartbreak, all of a sudden feel the need to just sleep around with loads of different women. How yes. is that gonna solve anything? In Come this on. time, I felt the temptation Come to on. go to that place. Come on, man. I felt what it was like to be that heartbroken guy. Not that I haven't been heartbroken before, but this was a different kind of heartbreak. Yeah, 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 yeah. I felt what it was like to be that guy. And I now understood the mentality of the guy or what the guy is feeling mm. when he now wants to let's say, soothe himself or ease his pain mm -hmm. by seeking solace in the, in the, in the laps of many women. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was interesting to come in contact with that because in that time, what's this? When you say yes to something, it means you're saying no to something else. That's good. And so in that time, I had to say yes to God and say no to whatever I was feel feeling. Not to invalidate what I was feeling. I had to process my emotions. And this is why community is very, very important. I had a number of brothers I could speak to in this time of need. And just like Toss and Emmanuel were saying, I was able to just be real with God and be like, you know what, God, this is painful. I still have these desires for this young lady, but nevertheless, your will be done. And now what I ask is you give me the grace to rejoice that your will be done, even when it's painful, that you give me the grace to accept your will. Yeah. One last thing I'll say. I also learned that whilst the truth sets you free, there are details to the truth that you don't necessarily need to know. They don't make you any more free. The truth may set you free, but there are details, some details to the truth that don't make you any more free. And so for me, it was coming to terms with that and being okay with saying yes to God and saying no to some of the questions that I had that I didn't need to know the answer to. Mm, okay. Mm. Nice. Now, of course, there were other questions which I was able to ask and, you know, able to resolve things and things like that. Um, <laughs> now, I say this with a smile on my face, but this is a very painful time. I had to shed my tears. Yeah, yeah. I had to shed my tears. Yeah. But having done that, I'm now in a better place because I, I can, that, that word which kept me in that time, because you can know the theory. You can know the theory. You can know the theory. You can know the word. But do you live it out? Do you live it out? So I just pray that God gives us all the grace to live it out. Because I'm here smiling and talking as if it's nothing. No, it was very, very painful. It was the most painful thing I've probably been through. Wow. But by the grace of God, my yes is still yes. Hallelujah. Hey. And I hope yours will be too. God. Amen. Bro, That's you... an offering basket, man. Right. Wow. <laughs> Layers to this thing you just said, bro. <laughs> and even when you were talking about suffering... I was remembered, I was reminded of that scripture, Hebrews, I think it's five or eight, where mm. it says that though he was a son, mm. once again, identity, he, once again, he knew who he was. Free, he learned obedience through what he suffered, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the word of God. How is a perfect man learning obedience, bruv? Mm. Why is a perfect man even going through suffering? Mm. And I, the more I see, the life of Jesus, I'm seeing that it's more of a model 
that we ought to emulate. And and is, and, I, and I see that. And what you said about suffering is not there to like punish you, but to authorize you, to authenticate you. I'm We're sorry. seeing that there is a that even through what we suffer, God is teaching us through obedience how to still say yes. Yes, if anything, he's, he's perfected our yes because it's easy to say yes when everything is cushy, of course. Mm -hmm. But when he says yes at the price of what you desire, yeah, in the midst of the pain, yeah, you know, like when you're talking, bro, and even when you talk about the part where you got the temptation to want to go and sleep around, it just reminded me of the time when I had my um church madness when my church got shut down. And I went, I had my, I had my, what I call the dark night of the soul experience where for three months I was in some, I don't know where I was, but I was in one heavenly club and I was battling. Every demon that I thought I was delivered from came on my front door. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jacob, I, I was wrestling, bruv. Yeah. Because the, 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 the thing about pain is that, is that if you fail to process it with the truth, it has a way of teaching you to fight against what the truth actually is because my present reality, my present emotions, my vivid experience is, is, is echoing this pain that I'm feeling and you are hearing the words that God is still faithful, or God is still good and all these things that we know in our head that I've preached about and taught about now comes to the test. Mm. That's it. And I won't lie, bruv. Those, 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 that January to March 2015, it was, it was a very dark time. Mm. This room I'm in now, it was, it was, it was pitch black. There were no, no lights on. It was mm. months, on. and it was crazy because I'm hearing God, but I'm feeling this. I'm, I'm doing. Mm. It, was, it was the definition of madness. That's what it was for me, literally. And it took me coming to a place where my wife had to kind of force me to come to church that Sunday. And literally, the pastor was preaching, and I, I remember it vividly today. My yes wasn't even me trying to, to even like do something to show that I'm saying yes. I, 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 I fell on my face. I said, I said, Lord, help me. Literally, I'm here. If, if, I, if, I, if I didn't do that, that guys, I guarantee I, I would have walked away from the faith that day. I knew that day was, was a day of value of decision where if I didn't respond and I responded with tears in my knees, I didn't, I didn't have words to say. It was like Hannah praying. That's, that's, that's groanings. I was like, Lord, and, and he caught me, guys. Jesus. I'm seeing it now. And it taught me the, 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 the power, like Emmanuel was saying, vulnerability, transparency, weakness. You know when we say weakness? Sometimes we think, oh, yeah, I'm feeling weak. When I say weakness, I mean, I don't have the ability, guys, to even say what it is God to say. I, all I can do is just, it's grown. You understand? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That yeah. level of pain where Hannah didn't have words, she was groaning, they thought she was crazy. Mm. But God is faithful, my guys. I don't know, Emmanuel. I you can feel to share. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just like um, I'm literally during God. God has got a powerful way of doing things because um, one of the things I realized even during this this year, you know, I had God. God used it, um, used the pain, and I, I totally agree with you. How we handle pain determines the way we go. Literally, yeah. And yeah. one thing that I've been reminded about this year is the power of identity. Yeah. How you use your identity. Um, you know, and um, what, what can I even say? Because coming back to what you said um, about, you know, the, the girl, you know, leaving and getting getting married. One of, one of the things I realized is that sometimes when things happen, your wounds can teach you lies. They can tell you things about yourself that are not true. And if you listen to those things, it takes you down a road of confusion, a road of bondage, a road of, and this is where, and this is the thing about it is that a lot of, some of even physical diseases can come from these emotional issues. Yes, yeah. sir. You can develop even like psychosomatic disease. You know, the word tear, you know, comes from the word schism. That's where you have the word schizophrenia. So even when it comes to things like being double-minded, you know, am I this or am I that? People can even project their own insecurities on you. Mm. you know? But um, one thing I would say is for me right now, relaying the foundations, you know, going over the things that I know about myself that God has said about me has been a key part in protecting my identity because mm. ultimately your identity affects your boundaries. You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah, like Adam, yeah. Adam... You know, it's not just a matter of don't eat the fruit. You know, it was because you're a son, and I've given you boundaries because 
your source of life is going to be God. Yeah. So for us, our source of life is God as well, but there's certain boundaries that God puts in place. I can relate with what you're saying um, in some parts because at the point of pressure, you know, there was some random, just, you know, random things. He said, I, about past things that you've overcome coming back to you. Oh, <laughs> why don't you do this? Oh, there's time. You know, you have your own house. Then it takes, and this is the thing. This is one thing, I, this is one thing I would say to people, you know, in order to say yes, you need to plan while you're strong for when you're going to get weak. Hey, come on. This is something that I've tried to do continually. And I'm not saying that I've had wins every time, but I've had to have conversations with, with, with mentors or with people. I feel like doing A, B, C, and D. Can we set up a system to support, to protect me? You know, you know the word brother? It means fence, isn't it? The word brother means fence. So when you have a brother, you know, someone you can trust, it can be a fence around you. That has helped me so much. My God. Early, early, later this year, after kind of recovering from those things that had happened, um, you know, our church had a conference um, in September. And <laughs> now I've, I've got back into preaching and things like that. And, you know, settling in and all, all that kind of stuff and um the thursday before the conference uh my job they terminate my contract they literally terminate a contract i confront a, a issue of a child and same-sex marriage and uh, same-sex uh matching and things and they, they they thought i was homophobic they thought that i was in in intruding and all this kind of stuff ended my contract so imagine i'm praying for a word from god you know the week literally the thursday things shut down the next Friday, my house is broken into. Like the 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 way the things are happening, it's wild. It's it's like it, it, you can't even plan it. What? But you know what's so powerful about it, though? As crazy as it as it sounds, sometimes rejection is direction. Yeah. Rejection yeah. literally is direction. Whoa. So just going back to the point that you said about that, you know, the woman, you know, it can be painful at a time. You don't yeah. even understand what's happening at the time. Mm. But sometimes it looks like rejection it looks it feels painful i've been, been in situations not the same but situations where you know something has happened with a with a lady she's not been interested or i've not been ready or, or all those kind of things rejection it is painful at the time but the doors it can open up is yes, crazy yes sir. i'm i'm planning for a conference asking god for a word the day before the the, the conference the two days before the conference i lose my job I'm thinking about the money, the finances for, you know, I've got some savings, yes, but ultimately, you know, unless I get a provision in, then it's going to it's gonna go out. It's fine. Yeah, it's but the reason I'm saying this is because that losing my job was one of the best things that's happened to me this year. Wow. Come well, on. Because if I didn't lose my job, I wouldn't have been... After that, yes, I, I got burgled, but after that two weeks... I begin to take even my calling, you know, like the business that I've, I've been doing serious. I've been doing the business for about a year. You know, within within um, probably about two weeks, um, I managed to fill the house with tenants. Right. I then acquired another house. I got the website done because there was a, it created a sense of urgency. Sometimes, you know, saying yes can involve being uncomfortable, being put into oh, yeah. experiences where you're just not comfortable, you know? Mm. And um, long story short, now the business is in a much, much better place and a much progressive place than it was from when I was working, you know? And I find that sometimes things have to be pushed away from you. Sometimes there has to be some no's, you know, yeah. all to you, but that no is actually pushing you into the corridor <laughs> for, for your yes. You know? you know what, bro? If I could just like jump on top of yeah, that. Yeah, bro, I ahead. think everything you're saying, like, I completely agree. I mean, this is, this is again, it kind of comes down to like, are you going to trust God or not? And no, I don't mean in some like superficial waft away your feelings, that doesn't matter, just trust in God. No, 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 we're not here to do that. But what I mean is that, you know, we've said it before that the, the issue with Adam and Eve, some like to say these days, but I agree with them, that they defined good and evil for themselves. Hmm. So when you receive rejection, and we know that all things, whether you're an Arminian or a Calvinist or whatever you want to label yourself, all things are working for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. So if you receive rejection, we have to trust that God 
is working it for our good, even though yeah. it itself might not be a good thing that we enjoy. Mm. And does, isn't this what Paul says when he says, consider the fiery persecutions that you're going through right now, consider them as discipline, right? A father mm. does not discipline his illegitimate children, but his legitimate children. And therefore, when we're going through these things, we can take it as discipline from God and it's mm. working something good, not just for us, but maybe and likely in us as well. So yeah. completely mm -hmm. agree with what you're saying, bro. It's yeah. a, it's perspective is, is key. 100%. Yeah, that's, that's, that's deep, man. And I think even just even on, on top of that, right, I think just what I'm getting from what we're discussing for me is just the importance of really pursuing healing. Mm, but you can't yeah. pursue healing until you realize that you actually need healing. Mm. And um, I think sometimes, you know, our minds are, are often clogged up by these things. Or, for example, the quote-unquote masculine way to deal with such is just to kind of move on, get on with it, and et cetera, right? Mm -hmm. But if you don't heal, then you won't be able to say yes effectively. It, it, the reality, I, and I'm telling you this, you know, for example, we can't get, can I say, wait, this is why I love these transparent talks, because it actually shows you that, fellow brothers can go through something and mm. overcome through the power of Jesus. The problem yeah. is people aren't talking enough about the experience. Do you get what I mean? So people yeah. are acting delivered, but you're not actually delivered because when another situation comes, you crumble again. Hey, because, your identity, because your identity is so fixated on what you do. Hey. We're too busy pretending to be something. Mm. But remember when, when, when the Bible says, literally, look, this is my beloved son of whom I'm well pleased. That was before anything had been done. Yes. Yeah. So if you're fixating on, on your doing, that doesn't make no sense. Mm. Or you're comparing yourself with the next man, it's, that doesn't make no sense. Mm. It's like, okay, cool, look, I'm a son. Okay, now, Lord, mm. I'm struggling with this. I need your help because I'm telling you this, you're not the only one struggling. I'm telling you. Oh man, that's for There's certain. many brothers I've met. There's many brothers I know. <laughs> your, the truth literally can set them free. I'm telling you, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, mm. liberty. Mm. Your testimony can set a brother free. Yes, sir. You're keeping it to yourself. And that's to me, that's prideful. Wow. Mm. Why you keep it to yourself? Because you want to look strong. You want to look better than the next man. But we're seeing when you don't deal with emotions, we're seeing what happens to our fellow brothers, our amazing yeah. brothers we've seen, amazing men in leadership this year, what we've been seeing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. We all talk. We need healing. We all talk. One, for example, recognize that something's wrong. Like I myself, I say, you know what? I need to go get counseling again. Mm. I need to go, and yes, I've done counselling before. Okay. But I need to go and get counselling again. Mm -hmm. Because there's things that I'm still affected by. Mm. And oh. it's affecting my yes. Wow. It's affecting it. Wow. Because I'm not able to really give the Lord my best. Not that he needs it, but I'm not able to truly represent him as an ambassador of the Lord. Because... Mm. I'm too scared about what a brother will think of me if I tell him that I'm still horny. Mm. <laughs> if I tell him that even though we've ministered lead in prayer, all I want to do is have sex before marriage. Hey. Oh my God, man. <laughs> we don't know think about these things and then what happens is someone climbs up because of gift and then they crash. Wow. <laughs> and the support ah. isn't there because we expect that man to be perfect. Mm. A lot of us men need healing. Healing. <laughs> but bro, like, is this not what our forefathers were doing? Where they intentionally showed that they were weak. Yeah. At least they said it. If they didn't say these are the exact things that I'm struck, but at least they said it. That mm. you know. Just so you know, don't worship me. We are men just like you. Yes, sir. Heck, even the angels said it. Don't worship me, John. I'm a servant of the Most High, just like you. Mm. So why we go, go for it, bro. 
Not not I'm responding to you. No, nah, literally. <laughs> just, if I could just, just jump into that because Please, the, you're just just on smoke right now. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but you know one, one of the things I feel that's so important when we deal with you know surrender and stuff like that is we have to come to some root stuff mm. and one of the things I found that's helped me this year especially is we have to redefine our definition of success yes we don't deal with our definition of what success is we will spend a lot of times a lot of men especially spend a lot of time in competition you know yes, Going back to what Tosin has said, I agree because you know in 2020 we have got so many people right now. We've got you know, people, everyone's got a microphone, everyone's yeah. got a microphone. Social media, everyone, you, uh, YouTube, everyone. Listen, we've got logos, we've got business, we've got everything that's going off right now. Yeah. Everyone is out there, Insta Live, it's on fire. <laughs> but the issue of it is, is we have to come to a place of coming back. What does success look like to God? You know because in terms of society right now, globalization, everything is coming closer. You know, you can pick and choose. Everything is just is available. Mm -hmm. What's happened is, is that success looks like having the money, having the followers, having this, having that, and all these different things. But ultimately, when you look at success in the Bible, a man called Jesus, John the Baptist, John, it was success for them. They all knew God. But the manifestation of their destinies are all different. All you know, different, one of the things I feel that's so important for us to do in order for actually for us to progress, we have to change our definition of success. Yes, because sir. if your if your definition of success is you, like you said, Tosad, you're looking like there's no problems going on. You're you know you're quote unquote private, and what can happen is is again like you said, we can project looking good rather than actually being good. Yeah. And Ultimately, if we're in a culture that rejects honesty and rejects transparency, then that mentality, when it creeps into the church, it makes people ashamed of a real story. Hey, can we even handle a real testimony? Come you know, on. we're talking about honesty, and it's true. But there, for example, now LGBT movement. We're talking now about about um, uh, uh, same sex or or about um, finances or about incest or all these different things that are taboo drugs and you know if someone really got up on the altar and said listen guys i used to do a b c and d mm. um, now i'm out you know and i'm free can you say amen people will be picking up stones <laughs> one of the things i realized until we as believers are not intimidated by sin we're not going to be able to create an environment where people can actually have real healing and honesty one thing about Jesus is, is the reason why people were able to be around him is because he was not intimidated by sin. Come on, sir. Whoa. He wasn't intimidated by sin. He wasn't afraid of it. And I feel that lockdown, even now lockdown, what it's done is, is it's closed the door the, the door of many buildings, you know, so that the doors of our hearts, the doors of our understanding can actually be opened up again so that God can actually come in. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Because, and ultimately, you know, going back to what you said about testimony, sharing our story, this is one of the things that I feel so powerful for us to do. But we need to redefine certain things so that we can actually do that. Mm. Because he's sharing his story, because he's sharing that he's been through this, does not make him less saved. You know? Wow. He's not a sinner because he's been through this. If I anything, know. bro, sorry to jump in. If anything, oh. arguably, he's more saved because you see the I transformation. I don't trust people that don't have a story. I don't trust them. <laughs> I don't trust them. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't. If you haven't, if you not been in, come out of something and come overcome, I, you don't inspire me. You intimidate me. Jesus. You don't inspire me. I'm intimidated by you because the scripture talks about people who are broken. Yes. Going through something. I'm not saying that everyone has to have a a, a juicy story, but no. there has to be a process of. I was blind. Now I can see. I was dead, but I was alive. Yeah. This yeah. is what happens. Come on. Yeah, and so for me, the, the one of the things that I have been practicing from some of the things I've learned from my mentors is giving people the gift of going second. Ooh. Giving people the Ooh. gift. Of, what does that mean? Yeah. When the people that I mentor, I try and give them the gift of going second. I try and tell them my story. Yes. Because if I can, if I can tell you my story first, what it helps do is create an environment where 
actually, we both recognize we all need the grace of God. Yes. You know, it says, my grace is sufficient for you because um, my strength is made perfect in weakness. Yes. The society that we're in right now celebrates strong men, mm. not weak men. The society that we're in right now celebrates men being strong and strength right now defined is success. You know, man don't show emotions. Mm. Man don't do those things. So if that's the definition of success, you can be strong, but you're inside, you're crying, inside you're weak. Exactly. So for me, yes, has had to go right back to telling my mentee, telling my brothers, saying, listen, actually, this is where I'm coming from. This is where I am. Hmm. This is where I want to go. And you know what I found? This is, this, is, this is what has been a helpful confirmation for me. People will say things like this. I felt like that too. Okay. I'm going through that too. Okay. I get you because actually this is how I've been feeling as well. And, you know, I realized that in that platform, it invites everybody in to healing, yeah. everybody in to obedience, everybody in to boldness. Mm -hmm. No man's an island, man. This, this, this is, I, I feel, I, I talk a lot, so just let me know. Oh, <laughs> just, I, I feel that it's been powerful um, in a way this year because we've been, you know, coronavirus, the mouths have been closed. Hey! You know, it's been closed. But ultimately, that's what it's been like for many people with their story for a long time. God is just highlighting yeah. something that's been going on in the spirit, in the natural. Yeah. Most of us, wow. our mouths have been closed because we've been actually releasing contamination rather than things that will heal. But wow. I believe that God wants to open up our mouths again so we can actually say things that can actually help one another to charge and to focus on... Um, push people into obedience to, to God. Powerful. Thank wow. You. That's that's me. Definitions, man. Success. Thank wow. You. Man. Wow. <laughs> hey. I don't have any words, guys. Literally, I'm 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 I'm, I'm digesting what has just been said, man. Guys, there are so much gems tonight. I don't know about you guys, but this conversation has been refreshed. Wow. Wow. Redefine success. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. No, literally. I think as you guys were talking, it, it, it doesn't, especially when you give the example, Emmanuel, about different types of um, outcomes of John the Baptist and Jesus and how it looked. If we were to measure John the Baptist ministry in today's metrics, the guy, <laughs> first of all, didn't have a building. <laughs> 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 lived in a desert, mm. ate locusts and honey for food. Could, could argue, mm. could argue, he was poor, you know, and 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 had a message that was one sentence: "Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand." Yeah, the Bible said, "No man born of woman is greater than John." What? No house. Not my <laughs> what? Yeah. Yet we don't see the record of prophecies that he did. We, we, don't, we don't have it. Maybe mm. he did, but we don't have that record right now. We have a message, mm. and we hear that he's a voice in wilderness, and so much so, Emmanuel, the the grace on his life drew people out of the city into the wilderness. Mm. Yeah. And John the Baptist, he blesses me in a way whereby God has taken away a lot of things from us in Corona. And if anything, he's reduced us to a yeah. voice, yeah. i.e. our Insta lives and our whatever we're doing right now. And, and if, if there's an hour where we can see whose voice is being authenticated or, or authorized or sent, it's even now. And if, if there's an hour for us to realize that uh, our success is not what we do, but echoing the cry of what he said. Remember, he's a voice of the one crying out in the wilderness. It's his cry, our voice. Success to me is, am I saying what God is saying? Right. I'll take us the time. Basic prophetics 101. You, prophecy isn't what you see. It's what did God say about what you saw? That's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Uh, yeah. A lot of us are seeing stuff and saying stuff, but that's not what God said. Off topic now. <laughs> you, you, sorry, you're speaking. You're speaking. What do you say, Ayo? <laughs> so, so, so I'm, I'm defining success yeah, yeah. being what God said to do. And that's it only. And maybe the success of this world that is deceiving us is that we think because it looks good that it has to be God. Whoa. 
But well, we must always, always authorize what we see people doing well with the questions that is that what God said? Look, it goes back to the temptation in the garden. Did God really say? The battle of your choices, of your will, will always fall back on your comprehension of what God said to you. Right. Mm. And I would argue, this is just me kind of inferring on the text, that the enemy could go to go to the to the woman because God spoke to the man. So the woman was handing in life through second-hand information. Even when she repeated what God said, that's not what God said. That's what she thought God said. Okay. And it goes back to the parable mm. of the building a house on the rock and on yeah. the stand. I keep telling people that the house on the stand was still built. It was, it was, he still built something. Yeah. So on the outside, it looked like he was building what the man on the rock was building. But yeah. on the day of testing, yes, you've got sir. to saw what it's all about. Maybe 2020 was an hour of testing to reveal what is our lives being founded upon. Right. Right. Are we building on the rock? Are we building according to the, what Jesus said? Or are we building according to what we think he is saying? Are we inferring our ideas on, on God's plans? Or are we obeying him to the letter? Luke Stick says that the man dug deep and laid a foundation. I believe God wants to excavate us. All of you guys spoke about the fact that when we went through things, especially with pain, pain got to expose the hidden things within us. Other mm -hmm. things started to rise up. Maybe, it's mm -hmm. a, maybe we need to check our foundation. Have we dug deep enough? Come on. My brother, do you know what? It was, I don't know if he was finished. Because Go I ahead, brother God. Just going back to what my brother was saying about, you know, having that difficult experience with, you know, his partner, you know, an ex and, and you know, he's, and you're talking about, about, um, you know, how, you know, you didn't just put yourself in any old lap, you know, and you, no. you made sure that you got comfort, just different things like that. And I, the reason I'm highlighting that is because just on what you said, Ayo, you said about, you know, they, they had the fruit and it affected their, their, their perspective. Mm. One of the things I found in saying yes is in my diet is in what I eat. And the reason I'm saying that is because it goes back to what you're saying, you know. Hey! They, they ate something. She ate something. And it's powerful because what you take inside your body affects what you see. She ate fruit, and she, now she thought she was like, she, she was better than God, you know. Her she eyes were like, opened. Her eyes are open. So it literally means that your diet affects your perception. Yes. Taste and see. Your Taste your and what see. Come on. What we eat. And, you know, alter, and this is the thing, like, for me, this year, when it was a point of pressure and difficulty, either I ate the food of Satan or I ate the food of God's word. I had a choice on what I'm going to eat. Because Woo! ultimately, what I eat affects what I see. Yes. You know, she ate the fruit and her whole way of life. I know it's crazy because it's the same principle when you're listening to conversations and listening to what people say, because ultimately, there's physical food, isn't it? But then yeah. the words that people speak are either going to yes. feed your faith or they're going to feed your fears. Yeah. You know, and... I know that in a place of vulnerability, I had to be around voices that would feed my faith because ultimately my faith is my perspective. Yeah. Just like what, what you were saying about, you know, go, you know, overcoming that difficulty, overcoming um, you know, to fact the fact that you know you could even say just now on 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 live, God bless that girl and 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 yeah. speak so honorably. The reason I went like this, yeah, is because I'm like, this man's a Christian. <laughs> you're a believer because you can't talk like that unless you're eating something proper. Come on, you can't talk like that unless you're diet. Because what you are, what you eat, mm. you are what you eat. And you know, Daniel, Daniel did he purposely said, Listen, I'm not going to eat the king's food because I need to make sure that my perspective in the culture that I'm in is clear. Because yes, the, the king's food is going to the king's changed my name, Daniel. One, the king's changed my name, he's also now trying to give me a diet. Why? Because he wants to make me conform to the culture. Come um, on. Environment. Because if I eat what the king is eating, you know, it was, co it was kosher food. Mm. He couldn't eat that food anyway because he was a Jew. So for us, everything is lawful when everything is helpful. You know, and, and what I've been doing, and coming back to what you said, I about success. Success may be good for somebody else. It might be okay for somebody else to do that. But for me, God, what he said in his word, I interpret it based upon what his word says, but also my, my identity, my purpose may not be the same as you. Yes. So if I'm not sure, if it's not feeding on 
on what he said about me and feeding on his word and, and, and building myself up, what I end up doing is, is I take your reality, take your experience, yeah. and I try and fit my life into it and I end up competing with you. So mm. what I'm just saying is going back to what he said, foundation is important. And I think a part of foundation is diet, is yes. diet. What we feed our mind with men. And I, I've had to make sure I'm eating. Sometimes, sometimes when you're going through pressure, you don't, you may not eat right. Yes, you know what I mean? Sometimes, yeah. you know, when you're exercising, you, 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 you have food, but then you might have cheat days, you know, where you eat, you might have, um, you know, you might get a takeaway. But if you do that in terms of spiritually cheat days and eating wrong things and, and, and allowing things into your heart, what happens is, is that you just, you don't, your diet affects your health, affects your perspective uh -huh. and you can't function. So for me, one of the things I've had to do is read the Bible when I don't feel like reading the Bible. I've mm. had to put on worship music when I don't feel like listening. Come on. I've had to pray in the spirit when I don't feel like praying in the mm. spirit because I know that it's going to affect my diet and affect my perspective on life. Yes, sir. What you just said there is the difference, discipline. Being yeah. able to do something when you don't feel like doing it. Yes. And if anything that's been that's been fished out in this year, especially with coronavirus, sir, is that your own your own discipleship has been founded out. Have you been relying on Sunday bites or are you in the word every day? Man. That's good. Yo. That's good. You, you now have a greater level of ownership of your discipleship. Are you eager to learn? Mm. That's good. Are you, like, like, our growth has been exposed for what it is. That's good. For what it is, if, it's, if we're growing anyway. And maturity means purely in, in, in able to do to take responsibility for your own growth, taking initiative, being this disciple. This disciple means disciplined learner. I mean, yeah. that's the basics of what we're supposed to be doing, guys. <laughs> yeah. And I always say all the time, discipline is the difference between between good and great between what it's a difference what we're able to do when we don't feel like doing it it's powerful guys man is it, god you guys are well, you guys are blessed me tonight no, you guys are blessed me tonight this it, is yeah go on. man of god no, no, no. I, I was going to say i mean just some of the things that I, I i'm just hearing obviously even as we're speaking i was hearing like okay cool like how do we start our days and end our days even when we talk about discipline right like you know when we're training for something or like when it comes to work i will make sure i am not late for work right mm -hmm. but we don't take we don't take that same initiative obviously when it comes to our spiritual lives mm -hmm. you know and and that kind of intentionality and i was hearing good morning holy spirit and i feel like it's one of those ones where it's like you know what I could really start my mornings by saying literally, good morning, Holy Spirit. I want to yeah. spend some time with you. I understand that the structure of my day ahead is going to be quite intense. So let me take advantage of the time now. Instead of looking on my phone first thing I wake up, let me actually just step aside and get in your word because I understand that I'm feeding myself for a season to come. Yes. Come I'm on. building habits. Yes. For times where I don't feel like doing it. Okay. So when I'm broken, there's a habit of studying the word and there's a habit mm. of praying where it's all I know, it's a norm. Mm. So I, I know that I can rest in the truth mm. even when I'm struggling. Mm. And not only that, I understand that the truth sets me free. Not yeah. only that, I understand that literally that the Lord has washed me clean and made me white as snow, even if that mad thought comes. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still washed clean and made white as snow. Even if I did the calamity, he washes me clean and makes me white as snow. You see, it was, what? You, let me tell you this. For me, the beauty of not sinning basically comes from just the fellowship of G, with Jesus and understanding that I am above that. Yes, yeah. that I'm an heir of God and co-heir with Christ. You have to yeah. understand. Let me read this word. Are we believing this word? One of my prayers is that God, you know, I believe, but help my unbelief. Yeah, okay. yeah. Because the Bible says, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. Yet when God tells me to do something, sometimes I still struggle to say yes. Mm. Yes, bro. So 
So therefore, I have to question, do I believe the word that I'm reading? Mm. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. And you see, the problem is, I'm telling you this right now, our focus isn't there. Mm. Our focus isn't there. That's the issue. When you're focused, mm. and being focused doesn't mean that you act stronger than the other. No. Being focused recognizes that you need to feed yourself for the future. Mm. So you can be vulnerable and struggle now, but you know that when you go through your deliverance, when you get your counsel and et cetera, you know you're going to be strong for the future. Mm. You know, people in the Bible said, follow me as I follow Christ. The audacity. <laughs> <laughs> follow me as I follow Christ. How many of us can say that? Come on. Mm. Mm. Yet yeah, the word of God said, great is he, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Mm. Yes, the Lord is even already calling you an overcomer. Yes, he is. So new, you're a new creation. You're no longer a slave to sin. Mm. So why are you acting like it? Why are you allowing this sin to overcome you and make you feel like you're not close to God? Why? Mm. He doesn't have control over you anymore. You accepted Jesus. Mm. You're a slave to, we're above that now. Mm. We can be weak because the Bible says in our weakness, you'll be strong. Mm. So why being weak isn't a bad thing? No. Being weak actually enables us to be more solidified and holistic men. Mm. And that's wow. going to help you as a brother. That's going to help you as a friend. That's going to help you as a father. Mm. Because you're sure, because you know who your father is. That's good. Mm. Cast your cares upon him. So why aren't we doing it then? We're doing it. We're trying to do things by ourselves. Why? Because it makes us feel strong and tough. <laughs> Doesn't make no sense. And that's the deep part about it. Like the reason why we don't do it is still deception because we're okay. not doing it. Well, we're not doing it because we think it's going to make us what we're already not. Yeah, already are <laughs> weak. So yeah. once again, it's admittance. It's confession. Let the weak say, "I am strong." Yeah. God's Come not on. trying to. It, it's not about you feeling it. Is a faith is the ability to speak opposite to what it actually is. Yes. Mm. Let the weak say, I am strong. God acknowledges our weaknesses. But even in the acknowledgement of our weaknesses, he's still saying that you can, have, you can have the audacity and the confidence to say, I am strong. Because why? His name is Emmanuel. God mm. with us. Yes. We're not alone, you know. His name is Emmanuel. So I want yeah. to encourage you, brothers. You know, if anything, we can end this night, guys. Maybe fixing a bun, maybe fixating on the, on the how. So obviously... Okay. A lot of us have been in the dungeon before. So how do we get yeah. out? What, what What's the practical elements? And then we can pray. And if you're led to release words, then feel free to as well. So anyone can yeah. go. Mm. I, would, I would say for me, one of the fundamental things is a safe place. Safe mm. place. Um, you know, that has been a blessing. Safe, safe place. The first safe place is actually God. That mm. is my safe place. I can be myself. You know, that's the first place. Just being honest, practicing being honest with God. Yeah. In that place, don't tell God what you think he wants to hear. Tell God what's on your mind. Yeah. Don't exactly. speak your prayers, speak your prayers. Be honest, you know, be totally mm -hmm. honest. Um, <clears throat> I encourage people praying scripturally, but even if you don't know how to pray, don't have to say, start just write, write down your thoughts and they'll it'll promote a release. Mm -hmm. The second thing I would say is, is safe people. Find some safe people. Now, how do you know they're safe? A couple of characteristics. One is that they're reliable. You know what to expect. Two is that they're mature. They're people who will tell you the truth with, um, according to the word, not people who will um, enable you. You don't want to be around friends or people who enable you. Okay. Oh, I'm feeling weak. Yeah, 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 you're weak. Like, that's, that's it's good to acknowledge someone's weakness, yeah. but they should be people who are codependent in the mm. sense that they're trying to, to, they're trying to, they won't, they, they hold you accountable for who you are and who you're not you know, um, and people who are also got a level of emotional intelligence. And I think that's yes. important because important. you tell what can cause people to be by themselves. You have to acknowledge the other side of it as well, guys. What can cause people to want to be by themselves is they tried before to speak to somebody and somebody shut them down with a judgmental, condescending yes. Yes, um, statement that further traumatized them. Yes. So take a risk again, my brother, to, to Amen. trust again. And then another thing as well is 
with that safe person to explore your feelings. Wow. Your thoughts. Yes. You know, be honest. Whether you have to shout, swear, whatever you have to do, be an honest <laughs> place. I'm not saying that it's right, but yeah. the Bible says in Isaiah 51, verse 6, it says he desires truth in the inward parts. Yeah. God can only heal you, not the person you pretend to be. Yes, sir. You have to be open, you know? And then yeah. after being open, then bring the word of God into it. Yeah. So yeah. take what you're feeling, in, uh, uh, compare what you're feeling to what the word of God says, mm. and then you can develop an action plan for That's forgiveness right. of yourself, forgiveness of people, and, and, and reconciliation or an action step based upon whatever the issue Powerful. is that you're doing. So then things right. are that's very good. I think even when you mentioned that last bit, I'll let you go next, Kode. It, 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 it reminded me of, of one thing I learned from my um, um, dark experience is that don't process your pain with people who have the same offence as you. Uh, Do, don't not process your pain with people who have the same offence as you. Mm. And the second thing the Holy Spirit taught me was um, process your pain with the truth, not against the truth. Come on. Oh. that means that Jesus is willing to walk with you through what you're going through he's not against you he's with you I, I need people to understand that <laughs> word yes. Emmanuel okay he is with us not against us he wants to walk with you through the valley of the shadow of death but man of God Corridor, go ahead no it was even just really you basically said it all um, oh. the both of you as far as I'm for me personally I would say <laughs> um, one thing I would add in there is Essentially, try to remember, as mm. painful as it may be, that God is not defined by your negative experiences. That's good. If your negative experiences or even your positive experiences define God, and God is not defined in your view by what is faithful and true, which is his word, mm. then what you might find is an idol in your eyes of who God is, which will crumble with your experience. So please, 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 my elders would say, I beg you in the name of the Lord, do mm. not define God merely by your experiences. Yes, mm. we taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes mm. and amen. Mm. And if something wrong is going on in our lives, our response should not be, well, I've tasted this and I've seen that it is bad. Therefore, the Lord is not good. No, 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 no. The response is, God, I don't know what's going on here, but I choose to trust you according to the faithfulness of your name, according to the faithfulness of your word yeah. and in trusting him. Think about Abraham who had Abraham. Um, the list goes on. You see it in Hebrews, the Bible <laughs> says they died without seeing the promise, died oh, but they died believing. That's crazy. Very crazy. <laughs> they died believing. Jesus. So I, I'll, I'll stop here, please. Do not try and define God merely by your experiences. But just as Ayo said, or on this side, Ayo said, come <laughs> conform your experiences, conform your life to God's word. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I think just for me, what I just add is two things. Um, look in the mirror. Don't be afraid to look in the mirror. Wow. Yeah. Re really look in the mirror um, and, and sit down and sit down with God. Um, and, and those things that you may see that you don't like, have honest conversation with God yeah. about it. Because yes. ultimately, obviously, we want to be better men. And that leads to my second point, which is um, be transparent. Yeah, that's good. Just because the Bible says the secret of the Lord is with those who fear him, doesn't mean that you should just be keeping secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Please, yeah. be transparent. We want to see the authenticity. We want to see it. We want to hear your testimonies. Yeah. You know, when we're not believers, we're called to really love each other, not called to judge. You should be able to confess yeah. amongst your brothers, mm. you know? So, yeah, man, I'm just really encouraging that culture. Amen. Can I just add something in there real quick? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You said you should be able to confess to your brothers. And I want to remind to the brothers, you should be able to trust that upon your confession, you'll be restored. Amen. Because those who are more spiritual should restore those who have fallen into sin, who have been caught in sin, mm. with the spirit of gentleness. Gentleness. Not harshly, but with the spirit of gentleness. So, yes, just as Bro Toss said, trust 
that you can come and confess, but also trust that you will be restored and understand. Ah, you don't have time. That's it. That's it. That's it. Trust that you'll be restored. We're in there. Can I, can I, can I just quickly jump in? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Go ahead. Okay. There, there's a couple of things I have to say that while you guys are talking, you, tr you keep triggering me. I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I have to say is, men, please forgive yourselves. Wow. <laughs> don't just think of other people. Forgive yourself, you know. I've had to forgive myself for mistakes that I've made. Sometimes we can listen to me. We can keep ourselves in a prison when God has opened the door. Yeah. Hey. Like, punish yourself for things that God has forgiven you from. Yeah. Wow. Your, release yourself. Don't listen. Your past is a teacher, not a tormentor. Don't let it be. Yeah. It makes a good servant. It makes a terrible master. So your past is there to teach you, not for your past to actually hold you. So forgive oh, wow. yourself. The second thing I'll say is, is we're gonna you're gonna need to review your hope again. Bible says mm -hmm. hope deferred makes the heart sick. Sometimes yeah. as men, we've tried something, we've tried relationships, we've tried businesses, we've tried ministries, we've tried things, and we get injured because our expectation doesn't happen, and we have a spiritual sickness called anxiety, called depression, hey. called confusion. These, these sicknesses of the mind, sicknesses of the soul. You know, we have trust issues because we tried to do it, we got burned. But why mm. I hear the Lord saying is, you know, Luke 5 that says, Master, we've caught, we've fished all night, we caught nothing. But he says, Listen, go, go again. Yeah. That's what God is saying. You're going to have to revisit your hope again now. Go list what you expected and be honest about what hurt you. But yes. then go through the process of healing. You, God, you need to re hope again, reset your expectation for that marriage, for that, yeah. that business, for that church. Um, for for your that um, health issue, whatever it is, you're gonna have to reset that expectation again. And I encourage you find scriptures to stand on that and get accountability to help you move with that in the way um, and timing that God has for you. Mm. Sir, can, can, can you can you pray into that, please? Yeah. Father, I just pray right now for every person who's got a broken expectation. Father, every dream, Lord God, every person who said yes but made a mistake, every man that said yes. Yes to a marriage, but it didn't go the way it's supposed to. Yes to a business, it didn't go the way it's supposed to. Father, yes. Father, we just pray right now concerning all of the expectations that have not been met. Father, yeah. we pray for healing right now over your yeah. son. We pray concerning the broken pieces, the yeah. broken parts of the soul, the yeah. broken parts of the emotions, the yeah. men that have stepped on the water but sunk. We mm -hmm. pray right now, bring them out of the waters in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. We pray concerning the storms in the men, the men that have been trusting you but have panicked in the storms. We're saying, Father, right now, heal the broken expectations in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you because your word says, Father, do not consider the things of old, for yeah. I shall do a new thing. Yeah. Father, we should take authority over the power of the past, yeah. where the past has been a snare, where the yeah. past has been a, a master, a terrible yeah. master. We take authority and we say, in the name of Jesus Christ, break yeah. your heart over the minds of your men, yeah. where guilt where shame, where condemnation, where worry has held your sons, where they have, Father, been hijacked in their present because of the voices of the past. We speak right now to the voices of the past. We command them to break in Jesus' name. We Amen. declare that you will walk in your purpose, in your identity. I hear the Lord say, you are not who you were. You are not what you did. Father, every no, Father, we thank you for the no's, the no's, yes. the closed doors. We mm. thank you, God, for the, the relations that didn't go the way that we wanted to, the mm. business that didn't go the way that we wanted to. Father, even the churches, the, all the things that have not gone the way, what we rejoice, we thank you because you are omnipotent, yeah. omnipresent. Yes. And we say, Father, yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we thank you that we will not fear any evil. We give you praise for the table that's prepared yeah. before us. Father, I pray for your sons. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that even though the going for a valley there's a table we thank you for the table we thank you and even i hear the lord say this my silence is not my absence even though you've not been hearing the lord speak to you it does not mean he has gone father open up the eyes of your sons to know that there are more that are with them than them yes. that are against them father we thank you we speak right now concerning addictions lord god we speak concerning father bondages pornography father god addiction drinking various things we thank you for the power of the blood that breaks the yoke. I just speak a breaking anointing right now to release your sons. And Father, we also pray for the wives, the daughters, mm. the aunties, the people that have been affected by some of us saying no to God. We say, Father, forgive us for saying no, for, for not considering the ripple effect of disobedience. But Father, we thank for fresh mercy today. 
Lord yeah. God, for empowering your sons and daughters to say yes, that will influence the wives, the sisters, the nieces, Lord God, the aunties and the mothers. Father, take all the glory. Bless your people. Thank you for new vision, for newness. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Wow. Hallelujah. Thank you. God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Luke 24, verse 30. And it came about when he had reclined at the table with them, and he took the bread and blessed it, yeah. and he broke it and began giving it to them. And then their eyes were opened and mm. they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. He reclined at the table. As you talk about the table, sir, this scripture came to mind, which is which our morning scripture this morning by Emmanuel in prayer. And I really believe the Lord is, is inviting us to a place of communion. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There is a, a renewal of our perspective of what it means to spend time with God. Yeah. And we've echoed it again. I'm going to say it again now. Don't say what you think God wants you to say. Okay. Mm. Be present with where you're at and confess those things. Yeah. Mm. I believe we're at a time where God wants to dine with us. He's knocking on the door of our hearts. If any man will open, he will come in and dine with him. And I believe that God is going to open our eyes yeah, again. Okay. He took mm. bread and he blessed it. He took bread and he blessed and he broke it. We're seeing yeah. brokenness once again, and we're seeing the word once again, the bread. What happens when when the word meets brokenness? Eyes begin to see again. Mm. Yeah. I'm decreeing right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, we Lord. pray in the authority of the scripture that in these yeah, last days you will pour out your spirit. Yeah. Your young men shall dream dreams and your old men shall see visions. Would you do it again, Lord God? Yes, Would you Father. cause us to hope again and to dream Amen. again? Would you cause us to see again? Uh, we pray right Amen. now. Amen. Let the Amen. tears that need to cry, cry now in the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. And let these tears be a cleanser Amen. that remove the lenses of old and give Amen. birth to Amen. new vision. I, I pray Amen. over the paradigm Amen. of our thoughts. I pray over the conditions of our hearts. Amen. And I decree today, let the doors of the hearts yes, Lord open. Jesus. I decree today. Yes. The minds of your people be enlightened. The word of God is a light. A love of our feet. The entrance of his word is light. Yes. And understanding to the simple. And today I decree over your men. We are men of understanding. Yes, men of wisdom. Yes, men of knowledge. Yes, men of revelation. Men who move by way of the impulses of the Spirit. Yes, In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Yes, Amen. Amen. Every day, feel free to pray. Anything you want to say? Hallelujah. Okay. Our Lord and our King. Yes. You are faithful and you are good. Yes. You've been kind to us in various ways. Mm. And Lord, I want to say thank you for giving us first the ability to even say yes. Yeah. And Lord, having given us the ability to say yes, what I'm asking for now, Lord, is that as you are your, the faithful God, that you help us to be your faithful people. Yeah. Help us to be faithful to that yes. Mm. Lord, I'm asking that the truth that we need to confront in our lives and embrace, yeah. that we may be strengthened enough to confront and destroy the lies of the enemy in our lives. I'm asking that you give us that strength. Mm. Lord, that you empower us, oh God, to obey, that you help us to go from the theoretical, oh God, into the practical, yes, and Lord. therefore show ourselves to be mature sons. Lord, we're asking right now that in this time, Lord, you would heal the brokenhearted. Yeah. Lord, that having yeah. healed the brokenhearted, oh God, having exalted yourself in our lives, we would not become pompous and arrogant and then yeah. lead to a fall. But instead, oh God, continuously, yeah. even when all things are well, even when all things are good, we would humble ourselves before you and yeah. that we would always say, that our strength is not our strength, but yours. Our yeah. wisdom is not our wisdom, but yours. Our yeah. faithfulness is not our faithfulness, but yours. And that we would always give you the glory. Every yeah. person here who has been shipwrecked or broken yes. oh, in any God. particular way, Lord, I'm yeah. asking that you will make them whole. That, yeah. Lord, the testimony of their broken pieces, the broken yes. shards of their lives, oh God, yeah. would shine for the glory of yes. your name. Lord, yes. your word says that we should not Hallelujah. hide 
our good works, but we should let them be seen before people that they may glorify you. So I'm asking, oh God, that you would give us the strength and the boldness to be yeah. witnesses, oh God, to be yeah. witnesses, not yeah. witnesses to ourselves and thereby showing ourselves to be perfect, but witnesses to you, Lord Jesus, that mm. in being witnesses, oh God, you would be glorified. Father, I'm asking, oh God, that as you have lifted us up, oh God, to testify to the faithfulness of Jesus Christ, that we ourselves, oh God, would not become pompous and try to become like yeah. God, try yeah. to arise and ascend the mountain and be like the morning star. No, that we would always point to you, Lord Jesus, who is the bright and morning star. And yeah. Lord, having glorified you, we ourselves would rejoice at the doing of your will when yeah. it's good, when it's bad, when it's uncomfortable, that we would always trust you, oh God, and that our yes would be yes and our no would be no. And yeah. that in doing such, oh God, we glorify you. We yeah. ask for these things, oh God, for your glory and for our joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. 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 And I just want to say, look, Romans 8 verse 1, scripture we all know and love. I'm reading that Amplified. Therefore, there is now no condemnation, yes. no guilty verdict, Hmm. No punishment hmm. for those who are in Christ Jesus. That is, who believe in him as personal Lord and Savior. And I want to scroll down quickly just to verse um, 31. What then shall we say to all these things? Hmm. If God is for us, brothers, hmm. who can be successful that's good against us Come on. <laughs> Lord God, I, I just really pray that we be affirmed yeah. this time yeah so that there is now no longer any condemnation yes for those who fight jesus it doesn't matter what happened yesterday doesn't matter what happened last week there is no condemnation of so that I pray that your sons are affirmed in that truth. Yes. Pray that your sons recognize that truly yes, you are with them and you will never leave them nor forsake them. Yes, I pray that they recognize that truly you are a lamp to their feet and light to their path, oh God. Father, mm -hmm. I pray that they recognize that truly their steps are orchestrated by you, Lord God. May they be affirmed in this truth. Literally, may they, and I pray even now that literally they That's hold up that shield of faith that quenches the fiery darts of the wicked one. Yeah. May your sons be armored in this time. Yes. And Father, may they long to spend time with you again. May they long to be intimate with you again. May they long, hallelujah, to meditate on your truth day and night. Yeah. yeah. Father, we're praying for true intimacy, oh God. We're praying for vulnerability. We're mm. praying that the sons are vulnerable before you. Yeah. That if they can be transparent with you, it will help them to be transparent with others. Yeah. Yes. May they recognize that they are truly set free. Yeah. And who the son sets free is free indeed. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 Powerful. Brothers, amazing. Amazing, man. If you guys have enjoyed tonight, give us some fire emojis in the comments.